library! Um, I don't have anything pithy to say about the Fast and Furious franchise. Something, something, family, cars. How does a movie license game that doesn't have to rush to launch alongside an actual movie still turn out this shitty? The Fast and Furious franchise has had a strange history. Pretty good original movie that became a cult hit, two pretty standard mixed sequels, and then somewhere around installment number four they said, Ah, screw it, let's make this a superhero franchise where action stars fight international crime with supercars that have angry sex with the laws of physics! And now it's one of the biggest movie franchises around. The Fast and Furious movies are goofy, silly, and cartoonish, but they fully acknowledge and embrace what they are to great effect. The only one that I've actually seen myself is the spin-off Hobbs and Shaw, but it was glorious, and I'm not opposed to checking out the rest of the series in the future. The Fast and Furious franchise is so successful, in fact, that it actually managed to revive movie-licensed console games, which have otherwise mostly died out in favor of cheap mobile money scams. So in 2020, we got Fast and Furious Crossroads, which landed on several internet personalities' worst of the year lists. So, let's add one more voice to the pile, why not? Not again! The game begins in Athens, which apparently is a reference to the eighth mainline movie. Dom and Letty, that's Vin Diesel and Michelle Rodriguez, are following up on a tip from Mr. Nobody, whoever that is, chasing a potential informant with knowledge of an imminent attack against the United States. This is all explained via exposition dumps that you'll barely pay any attention to, because you're dumped into the middle of a busy street speeding towards a bad guy with a time limit, trying desperately not to crash into everything in sight! Hang on. I'm hearing Holy shit, my car just plowed through a cement pillar and barely even noticed it was there! Although, given how physics works in the Fast and Furious movies, this is probably normal. To get to the informant, you have to get past his guards, and your primary means of attack to do so is the shunt, where your car just lurches over to the side without losing any forward momentum. Okay, unless the wheels are spherical, the car is a hovering DeLorean, or there are rocket boosters hidden in the sides of the cars, again, not out of the question in these movies, how the hell do they do that? Behold, every actual fight in this game is now that garbage swoop bike level from Shadows of the Empire. Drive alongside an enemy multiple times, carefully positioning yourself for your one attack. Oh, the cars do have actual weapons, they just aren't much better. The informant that you need to take down is driving a huge hybrid between an ATV and a tank with big ass treads that is somehow capable of keeping ahead of souped up street racing cars because shut up, and each character has a special weapon. Letty has a grappling hook and Dom has tire shredders. The grappling hook can only be fired when the game feels like it and requires you to mash square frustratingly quickly while maintaining a vague and specific position so the line doesn't break, and the tire shredders require you to use the game's insanely slippery controls and wildly oversensitive acceleration to to sit next to a single vehicle for several seconds to damage it. Oh, and both weapons have cooldowns to maximize how clunky they are to use. So after an annoying, I mean, um, thrilling car chase, Dom crashes into the informant and shatters all the bones in his legs. Wait, he can still stand! It's a miracle! The informant tells you that a super-secret mob called the Tatacol is preparing to attack the United States. Letty goes to Barcelona to investigate, and then we cut over to... the main menu! Because after installing off the disk and installing updates, the game still has a few hours worth of shit to install that doesn't actually start until after you've tried running it! Why is this a thing?! Anyway, we cut over to Barcelona, where we meet... <sighs> Vienna and Cam. These two are original characters that were invented specifically for the game. Vienna is a car racist who thinks that hybrids and electric vehicles are abominations that don't count as cars, and Cam complains, belly aches, and moans about literally everything around them because they have confused being insufferably whiny for having a personality. That's my thing! Vienna has a boyfriend, Sebastian, who's in debt up to his eyeballs with the Tatacol, what a coincidence, and they get pulled in with Dom and Letty's investigation. Just trust me, both the new leads are annoying as crap and have basically nothing to do with the story. They don't even work as audience surrogates, they're both secret, extreme, awesome street racers who already have the same skills as the main cast, so they're not really overcoming any obstacles or developing- Just why are they here?! So, Crossroads is a driving game. No duh. 
Every level tends to involve you driving to a destination, often with a time limit and strict restrictions on mission area to give you an obstacle course. Sometimes you'll have to evade the cops, who really suck balls at actually trying to catch you. And every now and then there'll be a race or a straight up fight with enemy vehicles, neither of which happen as often as you'd think in an action game. The big problem that hampers most of the game is the controls, which feel extremely sensitive and slippery so that you constantly crash into shit. And it took me a long time to figure out why. My best guess as to what's going on is that the developers wanted to include a drifting mechanic where you can kind of slide along the ground to position yourself around a sharp turn, but unlike in, say, Mario Kart where you use a button to specifically tell the game that you want to drift, here it goes off at complete random so you constantly swerve uncontrollably. And if the game hates you, which it does, your car can just decide to start drifting at the very start of a turn. Basically, how much traction your vehicle actually has with the ground is determined by a perpetual random number generator. So often you'll just slide everywhere, crashing into everything in sight. It's like there were invisible patches of greased ice all throughout the levels, so you just spin out at the game's whim. I've said this before, but it's damn near literal here. The turning controls do whatever the hell they want. Adding on to the problem is that you accelerate to a really freaking high speed extremely quickly whenever you touch the gas button. Because exactly what you need when you're driving a car that you can barely control is for it to travel at the speed of sound. And despite the fact that the game has two separate brake buttons, it feels like both of them barely work. So you can barely control your speed, which you'd like to be able to do if you need to get right next to an enemy to shunt them. I think the handbrake map to the X button is meant to give you more grip on turns, but the first time I tried using the damn thing, it just spun me 180 degrees in an instant, because you're actually meant to just tap it for a split second, I think. I still don't know. The game also has no camera controls past shifting at 90 degrees to either side, no mini-map to highlight enemies or terrain, and no means of looking behind you, so if you speed past an enemy, which is very easy to do, they pretty much just vanish into thin air and it's pure friggin guesswork trying to figure out where they are or to slow down enough to engage them again. Bad as the controls are though, they weren't complete game breakers for me. Trust me, I beat Superman 64 and played most of Carmageddon 64. I know what bad controls are, and much like Superman 64, I made all my maneuvers except for really sharp turns by just kind of nudging the control stick to gently push in the direction that I wanted to go. The game does alleviate some frustration out of the controls by making each of your player cars into vibranium battering rams that can smash through most obstacles and cars on the road with impunity, all while taking little damage. And if there's one thing that kept giving me joy in this pile of crap, it's how this game thinks gravity works. CARS CAN BE USED AS RAMPS! Whoo, that bitch went flying! I see gravity is less a law of physics than a casual suggestion in this universe. Do a barrel roll! Boop. I can see my house! The game can be really inconsistent though. Normally you can plow through cars like they were rubber inflatables, but this one police roadblock ends the game if you touch it. Or certain innocuous objects in the environment will be treated as impregnable barriers, or ankle high walls that you can't see will stop you dead in your tracks out of nowhere. And that's if you don't run into invisible walls that are just kind of thrown around in random places with no warning. It's also jarring how when you die, the game just slams to a game over screen, probably to save money on death animations, but this can make it super confusing trying to figure out what killed you, if the game had some kind of failure state like hitting the police barricade, or if something just drained a crap load of your health with no warning, which is deceptively common. After all, your primary means of attack is to hurdle yourself towards enemies just hoping that you land a hit. You will take a ton of damage in combat whether you meant to or not. Oh, and several levels will have more than one player character active so you can switch between them at will. There is literally no reason to do so apart from being forced to switch to access different weapons. And in the game's tutorials, every time you need to switch to the character that's mapped to the down arrow, the game will prompt you to press the 4 button. Turns out they forgot to replace all the prompts from the PC version. The only thing left to say about the general gameplay is that this game is really glitchy. 
By all accounts, I had one of the more stable experiences, but I've seen reports by guys like Rerez of levels just abruptly being failed for no clear reason, massive physics glitches when you try to drive through trick areas marked with a camera icon, enemies stroking out or coming to a dead stop, the list goes on. I don't think the game's been patched all that much, I think I just got lucky. That or I would make a really lousy QA tester. Back to the plot. Cam and Vienna run a towing and repair business, Vienna's boyfriend Sebastian is in debt with the mob, they decide to enter a street race to win a souped up car to sell and pay off his debt because street races are the answer to all of life's problems in this franchise. You have some casual driving levels, both going to wrecks and transporting volatile racing fuel, and something just cracks me up about these people having casual conversations on what's meant to be a Sunday drive in regular traffic, while I cause countless horrific accidents and go on what in real life would be a massive driver rampage. You get to the race that's being run by another gangster, Mauricio, and it turns out Vienna has a dark secret about why she and Cam had to leave Miami and why they stopped racing, but Vienna comes out of retirement to help Sebastian. I really hope that this is a supposed to lose race because both these cars control like butt. Sebastian's car in particular seems to weigh almost nothing and slide and juke around even worse than the rest of the cars I've driven so far. I was joking, but it turns out that you are supposed to lose. I didn't come in first place during either attempt, but my second crack at this stage, the game marked it complete anyway. Not that it matters, because it turns out the gangster that everybody knows is a gangster is a gangster, and you can't pay the mob by selling them back their own property, you dipstick! And now it's time for everyone's favorite game show, you're a dumbass! Please welcome our first contestant, Vienna Cole! Vienna just happens to be longtime friends with Letty, who points out that Tata Cole uses trucks to transport illicit materials. So in a boring ass level, Vienna follows a truck by just driving directly behind it on empty streets with no cover for several blocks, then pulls directly into her base of operations, then sits on ass in said base long enough for the entire block to spot her five times, then calls Cam to talk about how much she shouldn't be here before she finally leaves! Solid Snake ain't got shit on you! You, Vienna, are a dumbass! Our second contestant today is Cam Stone! Come on down! Cam suggests that they should rob the Tadakol truck! Why? It won't help with Sebastian's debt, it won't put a dent in the mob's operations, and it will most certainly get you all killed! If not right away, then buy reprisals from this massive mafia! Oh, but Cam has an answer for that! One, they're not going to kill us, because two, we aren't professionals, and for that reason, three, they'll never see us coming. They'll succeed because they suck! The Tadakul is prepared to defend itself against tough rival gangs, not three amateurs. The mob is ready for siege by a rival gang, but will be utterly powerless to three broke, unarmed rookies. Congratulations, Cam! You two are a dumbass! Next up on our stage is Letty, who decides to help out our stupid, stupid heroes, but says they'll need untraceable cars for the heist, so they steal- Ah, crap, I crashed into- uh, guys, uh, help! I'm, I'm stuck! Why is this one room full of shit that's completely indestructible? <clears throat> Great job, lady! The mob will never see you coming in cars decked out with giant bright green neon lights! Congratulations, lady! You too are a dumbass! These random Tata Call members who drove headlong into and got stuck in walls or are firing into the open sky wondering why they're not hitting me! You, sir! Dumbass! And last but not least is Sebastian! Sebastian is disqualified on account of being dead! So, yeah, the hijacking goes south and Sebastian dies. Sebastian! Good! I hated driving his car! Utterly heartbroken over the loss of this guy she's implied to have not known that well for a few weeks, Vienna blames Mauricio and then Letty for tricking them into their stupid ass plan that was Holy Cam's idea. But Letty takes pity on these poor imbeciles and brings them aboard their crew so that they can take vengeance on Kai, the tactical leader responsible for the murder. Also, this means that we can change over to some more bearable protagonists. They go to Morocco, you spend some blatant fiddle levels driving around big ass, completely empty maps until you find out the mob has a bullet train that you need to chase down and hijack. 
might have been more fun if the controls weren't all around ass, and if not for several more utter physics boners. Or if the weapons weren't such a pain to use, like the grappling hook that barely works, and the hacking device that requires you to take your eyes off the fast-paced, barely controlled driving to carefully time a second quick time event. Even Dom's rocket launcher isn't any fun, you just press square on a prompt appears and it works automatically. How do you mess that up? What's supposed to happen at the end of this level is you pull to the front so Vienna can jump off the train and onto Cam's car and escape, but what actually happened was the game broke so that the space you need to drive into never appeared, so I just had to sit on my ass confused until the train hit its destination and I lost the level. Yeah, did I forget to mention that every boss battle in the game has a time limit? Although considering that Vienna wants to sabotage the entire mission to chase after Kai, screaming about how she needs to avenge what's his name that she barely knew, leaving her behind would be perfectly fine by me. It turns out that Tata Cole was trying to smuggle an Eclipse device, which is implied to be an EMP. And the crew just instantly knows that it's going to a guy named Ormstrid, and they just already have a mole inside Ormstrid's organization, Tyrese Gibson's character, Roman. You have some missions as him going around the new map in New Orleans running errands for the gang, including one moment where they call the cops on themselves so that you can flee from them with an oil slick weapon that barely works and thankfully never shows up again. Then you have another street race, because Roman needs cars for a job stealing the second Eclipse device, and you have to win them in a street race, because shut up! This race is probably my favorite level in the game, mainly because it has a narrow track that kind of forcibly reins in the shitty controls, but it's also an 8 minute long race that I had to run 3 times because it never failed that I would crash into a corner and get stuck right before crossing the finish line. Oh, I know what I have to do. I gotta crash into the lady who runs the race. I bet she launches off like Team Rocket. Oof! Never mind. She's got an iron ass. Then, for no reason I can determine, you play as Dom driving across the map for several minutes with no obstacles to meet with Roman and do nothing. I have no idea why this is here. Eventually, I decided to take a shortcut through the fields and... Whoa! Ghost cord phasing right through my car. Is the corn a dream? Or am I? Roman then proceeds to steal the Eclipse device by dragging it behind with a tow cable, and of course the device has absolutely no mass and just flutters around and crashes into everything behind you. Not that I'm complaining, the controls did not need to be worse. Yeah, just blaze through the docks with a highly sensitive piece of machinery smashing against every wall, cargo container, and car in existence. I'm sure the thing will still work fine. No worries. But the bad guys figure out that Roman is a mole anyway and take him hostage, warning that they'll kill him if the heroes don't back off their investigation. The heroes then chase down the bad guys and fight three big-ass boss truck things in a row, because screw Roman, he was probably bluffing. You'd best get used to this too, because pretty much the entire last hour plus of the game is just one irritating boss battle after another. You fight one truck with a shockwave gun that Cam has now because shut up, that has a huge delay to its firing and does little damage, and you have to fight two high speed trucks with Dom and Letty pretty much exclusively using tire shredders that are frustrating as hell to use because of how hard it is to position yourself just precisely right to deal damage. The third fight is especially annoying. Dom has an EMP gun strapped to his car that it took a while to figure out does no damage, but I guess it slows the truck down. All I know is that every time I went in with Lady to actually deal some damn damage, the truck would lurch to a stop, zoom past me off screen, and I'd waste so much time trying to find it again that I failed the boss over and over for running out of time. Who would have thought a good set of brakes is all it took to stop this crew? I guess I'm just too fast, too furious. And then Roman is wearing a bomb vest that I guess they can't just take off. So you have to rush him back to head- Whoa, holy crap! Okay, I was worried that I wouldn't have any big glitches to show off in this video. And then this level loaded up with no floor. And then I died, because of course I did. And then it loaded up with no floor again. Roman explains that the Eclipse device is an EMP armed satellite that will knock out the United States missile defense grid so that other countries can attack, and Armstrong is going to launch it as a demonstration before he sells it. Okay, wait a minute. Hijacking an EMP satellite, there being exactly two satellites. 
Big chase involving a train, Russian villains. This is a ripoff of GoldenEye! Is that dollar prayer? Good idea. Let me hop on the line when you're done. I got a couple, you know what I mean, things I want to throw in there. Guys, chill out. Call it a hunch that the satellite he's got isn't going to work anyway. The heroes need to find the launch site of the satellite, and then the developers seem to completely stop giving a crap. The game just smash cuts to a final showdown with Kai completely out of nowhere. The desert terrain suggests that we just warped back to Morocco with no explanation, and there's a level where Letty is trapped in a cave-in and you have to escape by more or less just driving in a straight line. The Kai boss fight pissed me off so much. You have to slow him down with that damn grappling hook, which he can boost out of and break your line pretty much whenever the hell he wants. The game doesn't always remember to actually slow him down even if the damn harpoon works correctly. Cam follows along with you but does absolutely nothing but get in your way. And the chase is on narrow canyon roads where one false move sends you falling so the game respawns you too far away from Kai and you fail the level. And again, barely given enough time to kill him. Vienna screaming the whole damn time about justice for what's-his-face does not help my irritation. And that whole cave-in that Letty gets caught inside, just, just tell me if you notice anything weird about the cutscene that follows. Not only does Letty blatantly drive through a solid rock wall, but the cutscene is so half-assed they just left rocks floating in midair like time froze Zawardo. Either that or my crack about gravity just being a vague suggestion in this universe was way more literal than I thought. Oh, and Vienna and Cam found some mining equipment and a tactical truck, and you chase down Kai in a mining area full of excavators. The These clues go nowhere. Never brought up again. I almost wonder if this level was moved from earlier in the game and they ran out of time for a proper final Kai boss fight. I don't know. The gang warps back to New Orleans and hunts down Ormstrid, holding him at gunpoint with a single handgun between them against an entire squad of enforcers with machine guns. Dumbass. But he escapes in a hovercraft. This boss fight actually isn't bad, aside from the end where the boss bombards you with missiles that drop from the sky, are pretty much impossible to avoid, and kill the living shit out of you. But I eventually figured out how to get around these missiles. See, Letty is pretty much the only important party member because she has a rocket launcher, so I just switch to Vienna or Cam, let them soak up the missiles, and only use Letty when I have a clear shot with the rockets. Vienna is finally contributing something useful as a meat shield. You stop Ormstrid, but you're too late. The satellite is launching clear on the other side of the map. But this is the Fast and Furious universe, so of course some racing cars can get to the rocket before it lifts off. They didn't even add a time limit to this stage, not until the very end. You can stop for pizza and the rocket will wait on you. I guess all the fire coming out the backs of those rockets is just for show. Doesn't actually mean anything. But just when all hope seems lost, Dom shows up with a car sporting missile launchers, blows the rocket onto its side, and then the crew has to chase down a speeding rocket to disarm it, culminating with Dom jumping out of his car to surf on the rocket. This is exactly the kind of patently ridiculous awesomeness that you go to these movies for. And this would be an epic and kick-ass finale if it weren't for that fucking grappling hook that keeps breaking at random beyond your control. Oh, and if you thought Dom's car sporting a shitload of missiles would make for a really fun and kick-ass battle, look how long the thing takes to fire at one enemy. Guys, do you not know what fun is? So the day is saved and Cam and Vienna are offered permanent spots on the crew, oh goody. But Vienna comes clean about that dark secret of her past that was foreshadowed way at the start of the game and I don't think has been brought up since. In Miami, she organized a street race where people died. That's it. That's a Tuesday for these people. The heroes just already know that the race was a gang hit and just pull from their ass evidence clearing Vienna's name, so glad that non-issue was all cleared up. 
Fast and Furious Crossroads is not the unholy dumpster fire that I was promised, but it's definitely not a good game. The driving and racing would be halfway decent if the controls weren't so bad, and I was lucky enough not to run into many glitches, but man, the game's final stretch of basically five or six bosses in a row was draining to get through, and ended the game for me on a really sour and frustrating note. The game is about four hours long, and is still padded at that, with multiple levels where you just drive to a destination with little to no obstacles, and I can't decide if they were intentionally trying to structure the game like a movie, with restrictive action, tight levels in a short length, or if they just ran out of time and or budget. The roughshod presentation and the glitches make me lean towards the latter. The story isn't terrible, but it's weighed down by two deeply annoying main characters who barely even contribute to said story. Vienna is just kind of there with nothing to do but to keep screaming about a dead boyfriend that nobody cares about, and Cam is only there because the story repeatedly calls for a magical tech wizard that can hack things to advance the plot. But the story is in line with the cartoonish absurdity and high action that you expect from the films, so fans may get their kicks that way. Or just watch the game edited into a movie on YouTube because somebody inevitably does that with all the games these days. Even if you could set aside the bad controls, though, there's just nothing that stands out about the gameplay. Just driving from place to place relatively unimpeded, some races against AI cars that feel more like rigged obstacles than actual opponents, and a crapload of fights with weapons so stiff and unfun to use that they play more like finicky quick time event sequences. Nothing memorable apart from an occasionally hilarious physics engine. All in all, this is probably going to stand out as a black sheep of the family. And well deserving of its place among the... Terrors of the Library!